I have a high impedance inside the airphone. I have an LG Music System Q. Wait, it's over here. The headphone jack is over here. It's much harder than I think. I guess it's as good as mine as to what am I fucking doing with my life. <laughs> Anyways, LG V60. Oh yeah, hold on. Let me take my phone case off. I had my little bit of a creative liberty in terms of my presentation of LG V60. LG V60. You know, Ever since I know that LG as a phone division is shutting down, I now have to get my hands on one, the last one of your phone. Uh, you know, I previously owned the LG V50, and I absolutely love that, but I gave that to my uncle because he needs a phone that's cheap. So I gave it to him. And then ever since, I just want another LG phone, you know? This is it. I got my LG V60. I was searching for one ever since that news just dropped. And the LG V60, let's put it this way. It is one of a kind and a last of a kind. This kind of phone just disappeared from the market. And why am I referring to this as this kind of phone? Because here's why. LG doesn't even know what their market was. But I do. I know why I want this phone. And today I'm gonna tell you why. Why you should probably get one of these before... I'm not sure exactly they're gonna hike up in price, but before these just disappear. Here's why you need to have an LG V60. So first of all, oh yeah, <laughs> as you can probably see already, first of all, how is it as a phone. You can probably tell that it's not scripted. I have no idea what I'm talking about. Anyways, as a phone, the LG V60 is a phone. <laughs> it is as much of a phone as you can get. It's uh, you have a Snapdragon A65 in it, which is a last generation chip. It's a phone from last year, but it's still more than enough to hold up against today's, you know, flagship because the Snapdragon A65 is basically the same as the Snapdragon A70, which is still a semi-flagship this year's chip. And A65 is still enough to run whatever you throw at it. And you can definitely feel this is just a very nice smartphone experience as a whole. I don't really review smartphones, so don't expect me to know what to say. The software. Let's put it this way, the software it feels kind of old school. It feels kind of 20... Shut the fuck up, phone, I don't need to know. Anyways, the software feels very 2015-like, as everything is laid out very small, and everything just feels very compact. That's sort of, like, the, I, the effect of that is sort of negated with such a large screen, and I'm gonna be talking about that later. But the software, it feels like it just, it's just an Android with a little bit of a tweak to it. It's sort of good in a sense that you get more stuff on the screen at once, but the presentation just feels kind of old and a little bit, you know, less refined than something, let's say, just regular Android and or me UI. That, that's, that's something I've been very used to. This is a little bit less of that. And then, let's talk about the hardware. I mean, as a phone, the hardware on this is, is really good. I said the chip, it's A65. Very, very nice chip. And it's together with some really weird decisions, in my, in my opinion. 
because, you know, I personally own a V50 as well, the last generation of their phone, and I really do enjoy how they have a 2, 2K screen on that 6.4 inch screen. Yeah, that's great. I love a little bit higher deep, a little bit higher PPI, but now they move to a massive, I mean truly massive, 6.8 inch screen. This is actually bigger than any phone on the market currently, except for some stupid phablets. But this is just such a big chungus to hold in your hand, especially when it doesn't have curved screen and any kind of stuff to make it feel a little bit smaller in your hand. No, this is a flat screen. It's a very thick bezel on the side as well. This feels like a big phone to hold, and you can definitely feel that when you're holding it. And weirdly, on this year's V60, they ditched the 2K screen for a 1080p screen. Why? 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 Oh, fuck, it's just Boba left! Damn it. The PPI you can definitely feel, it's a little bit last year. Last decade. Not probably not last decade, but last semi-decade. It's a little bit mind-boggling to why that is the case. It doesn't really... I don't understand some of this, their decisions that they made. And for the camera setup, it uses a 4, 40, 64 megapixel, not 48. That is fine. That is really commonly found on, you know mid-range phones on that tier. I mean, the camera's totally not bad. It takes very decent pictures. I probably will put some example pictures in the thingy. Oh, hey, forgot my figure. Anyways, um, but it takes fine picture, but it's a little bit mind-boggling. Why didn't they just go up a step and then put a better camera on it? Still, question questionable decisions and as like a experience experience as a whole I just feel like this phone does not provide the best of the best in terms of anything to be honest but you know the software is mediocre at best the phone for me I I like very big phones but this phone's a little bit too big for me as well but it's just really weird. It doesn't really hit any specific market. Also, I have a dual screen expansion that I didn't get because now you're gonna be hitting about 360 grams of weight. I, that just, no, I don't wanna hold that. Why, LG? Why don't you just like focus on making the things that people really matter about, like 2K screen, 120 hertz refresh, refresh rate, and better camera. I, I don't get them. But why did I get this phone? I said the LG is one of a kind and last of a kind. And this kind of phone, except for some Vivos, but they're not as good. 100% not as good. LG always, like I mean always, since their V10, put a very, very good DAC chip on their phone. Like not just regular good it's very good i really do enjoy like it's a i think this year they put it like a ess the saber 9219 instead of the 9218p that they, they've been using for a very long time and to be honest i kind of hear the difference of that but it's here's the problem they never been very open on that. They just say, oh, we have a 32-bit DAC, and that's about all. That's literally about all they say about this phone's audio capabilities. And on, I've been looking at some um, DxO mark on the audio, and they just say the LG V60's audio is shit because they only test the recording and the playback through the speakers, which I, rem I mind you, this is a very loud speaker and it's very good for watching video and annoying everyone around you, but they just give, they give it a shit mark. 
and just totally ignored that headphone jack. Oh, they say, oh, they have a, LG still have a headphone jack, so that's something to be applauded with. No, not just that, just they have a headphone jack. This is the best headphone jack in the industry, and period. There's no other thing on a smartphone world that can output makes no difference to two volts RMS into any headphone you plug it in. Two volts RMS. Let's put it in that, like, in a metric that is about the same as a VO BTR5 on the single-ended output, at least. And that's a, that's a dedicated Bluetooth amplifier. And a lot of people just use the 3.5 anyways. So this phone, just one phone, it can output as much power as a dedicated amplifier. And it have a very good DAC chip in it as well. And I want to talk about a sound that it, like this DAC chip makes. Because, like, this, like, sort of... No, not the sound that DAC chip makes. The DAC chip, like, well, whatever. I want to talk about a tuning done this year. Because last year's phone, the V50, it, the tuning is done by Meridian. And the tuning was a lot, you know, I will have to say it's very sweet and very sort of, it's just very normal sounding. But this year on the V60, I think Meridian's taken out of the game and LG, they tuned the chip themselves. And this year, it's pretty obvious. It's a lot more um, dramatic and bloated, the sound on the LG V60. Because, the, you know, I do some parallel comparisons with this, the HD58X and the Blessing 2 that's sitting right over there, and I can really, really make out some differences, especially on the bottom end, like the very bottom end, the sub-bass. LG V60, <laughs> they pluck out a sub-bass so much, it's not even funny. It feels like a 5 decibel increase on a, like, maybe the 30 decibel range. Uh, not 30 decibel, fuck, 30 hertz range. It's, it's just funny that they went for like a more exact, like a dramatic and exaggerated kind of sound. And I really like it. I, I'm probably ashamed to, you know, admit that, but I really like this, the V60 tuning over the V50. I know the V30 and I think the V30 has like a tuning by Bang and Oslofen, but Olufsen? Ah, fuck, I don't even know. It's just Danish names, I don't know how to say them. I think that year's phone, I haven't heard them. Supposedly they are better than the V50 metric-wise because they have a lower output and blah blah blah. But that's... anyways. That doesn't really matter. What matters is that this year's, the V60, it sounded so good. It sounded so wicked and satisfying at the same time and let's just not let's just sort of you know get the numbers out there this is twice as powerful as any smartphone on market except for some vivo ones and those are very expensive very good they're not even high-end phones and this can be driven on the single-ended output the 3.5 that's the only output it can have it doesn't have like balance this can be driven Plenty loud. Like if you turn it down, turn it up all the all the way. Using my HD 58x, it can get slightly painfully loud with just the phone, and that isn't the case for many of the other devices. It can get uncomfortably loud, and I really do enjoy that. That just gives me so much headroom and give me so much confidence that I can use this without this or anything other that's just a fancy amp. You don't need a dedicated amp anymore. This LG phone, it can power this. And that's all I care about. It sounded really good. It sounded like 98% there. The resolution, probably not as good as the Fio, and you know, the soundstage is a little bit narrower because of the single-ended. But besides that, it's it's great it's just great and here's why it really just boggles my mind lg has been pumping out such a great device for audiophile but 
it's just such a shame that they don't seemingly know that they've made a, such a good device for an audiophile. They don't know their market. And they've been marked, you know, LG has been famous for making, like, you know, newest innovations, like wide-angle cameras. Uh, they've been making dual screens, <laughs> um, removable um, attachments on the G5. It just, they make innovations. They make them very well. Those are very interesting. But we have a problem with the LG is that they never stick with them. LG sort of just try something new and be, oh, that didn't work because people didn't buy it. This didn't fly off the shelf like, I don't know, the newest iPhone that had nothing special to it. So let's just stop making that feature. Probably that's not the best chance. That's not the best idea, LG. You gotta give it more chance. You gotta give that new gimmick a chance. And for the gimmicks that they do, put in the phone, not the gimmicks, the really useful things for us audiophile, the DAC chip. They always sort of just say, hey, we have a DAC chip alongside all those crazy features. And really, it just got smothered in all those information. That's not how you do marketing. You have to, you know, LG it doesn't have the most powerful research facilities. It doesn't have the most amount of like budget for research, but it got the gimmick. It got the headphone jack. If they can just expand their market out into the audiophile industry, like they, it can just inspire new audiophiles. They can say what kind of headphones you can potentially get if you can have one of these, the LG V series and G series phones. Like they can potentially create their own market, create their own niche. But they didn't. They just did whatever the hell they want, to be honest. And that's such a shame. Because this is such a great phone for that one purpose. That one purpose of having that really powerful deck. Having the all-in-one experience for just a entry-grade audiophile like me. And also, it's one of the only phones, if not the only phone, with a SD card slot like, and a very high-end chipset. It's probably the only high-end phone that has an SD card slot because people are being, have, you know, companies have been removing it so that you can buy the 512 gigabytes phone for a ridiculously overpriced price tag because they know you will pay for it. They've been removing the SD card slot. And to us audiophile, you know how important to have a separate SD card slot is. We have all our music on it, we can transport it wherever the hell we want. It's sort of like um, the modern way of us carrying a CD. We are old fashioned. We like these kind of freedom. And that's something Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, that's just not gonna give it to us. We want to carry, we want to get it out, get it in another device and just start playing it. That's just the way we want it. And LG delivers. But they just never put it on the product page. They just advertise this phone as like a video and all sort of thing phone that's a uh, marks like just like a flagship and not a very good one according to their words but this is not a flagship phone this is the audiophile phone and this is the only audiophile phone sad to see it go so to be honest if you can see one Hovering around, second hand, good value, or just buy off brand new. It's not that expensive. It's 400 bucks. I got this for 300 bucks because, as you can see, this little sticker over here is refurbished. Get it. It is going to be a one of a kind phone. phone. And I can be very certain this is probably a very last one of your phones. It is the last of their thing, like, they, they, they dissolved their entire smartphone department, as I just said. I know there's like the V60, the Velvet, the Wing, they never had that chip and this sort of, they don't exist for me, you know, LG phone that doesn't have that chip doesn't exist for me, so this is their last true phone. It's a 2020 phone, still stands up today very well. If you don't care that much about a camera, get it. Get it before you cannot anymore. 
I'm sorry about this stupid intro and anything. I don't want to sort of make it sort of too sentimental, but it is sort of sentimental to own the last piece of just someone's, like, just the last piece of a phone that I'm actually excited about. Anyways, I don't want to end on the low note, but here. Anyways, that is the last of LG. Get it while you still can. I'm just going to leave it there, and see you guys next time. Bye-bye. Okay. Now the end card's out of the way. What the fuck was that? CCAP? What the fuck is a CCAP? Crazy Chinaman, stupid as fuck audio file. What? Oh my god. I think I just done something that I have to do every time I have to do a video. It's just not even funny. I want to kill myself. <laughs> oh no. Uh. Oh, he did realize that this is just literally ugh, duct tape stuck on like a caddy, right? This is my whole setup. <laughs> hey, here's me. Watching <laughs> things that make me sad. And here's just basically um, the voice bokeh mode in LG. Makes your voice very nice. I just want to put that in. You know? Now that I think of it, what the fuck is a bokeh anyway?